Hello book people, P.T. Hilton here with a review of Aching God by Mike Schell. First of all, I'm just going to say it. I really liked this book. I gave it five stars. Before I get into the details of why, I'm going to talk for a minute about Dungeons and Dragons. And this ties to the book you'll see in a moment. Like a lot of people, back in 2020 or so, I really started to get into tabletop role-playing games, specifically Dungeons and Dragons. And since then, I've had, you know, countless hours of fun around the table. I also have grown to love media that somehow ties in or seems to uh, somehow play with the ideas of Dungeons and Dragons or related fantasy RPGs. Um, but I have noticed that when you look at things like the Dungeons and Dragons movie or, um, for example, the Dungeons and Daddies podcast, which is one of my favorites, I love it. But a lot of times they tend to really focus on the kind of humorous, goofy side of Dungeons and Dragons. And that's totally appropriate. I've had some very hilarious moments at the table, a lot of them. But I've also had moments of fear, thrilling moments, emotional moments. And I feel like sometimes those don't get carried over as much in some of the media that we see. So with all that being said, let's get to today's book, Aching God because I feel like it takes some of the tropes of Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder and some of these other uh, fantasy role-playing games and takes them very seriously. Uh, and it makes sense because Mike Schell, the author, is a Pathfinder writer. He's written quite a few uh, adventures for Pathfinder. I've not played or read any of them, but you can see those fingerprints on the story. So the story is about Arik Mateo. He is a older retired adventurer who uh, in a very classic Dungeons and Dragons type of adventure where he was went down to a, a dungeon and was seeking for treasure, his entire party except for him was killed in a very brutal and horrific way and he has just a ton of trauma from that. He has nightmares, he has like, there's a scene early on in the book that actually kind of shocked me where he actually passes out just at the mere sight of blood. This is stuff that we don't expect from our fantasy heroes. But I love the way it takes something that's so common to Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder, this just exploring of a, of a dungeon and fighting monsters in a dungeon, and takes it very seriously. Like if you really did do that, of course you'd be traumatized. Of course it would be horrible and terrifying. And this book um, starts with that, this broken hero. But of course he doesn't stay retired, he doesn't stay in his hometown, he gets called to an adventure that he cannot deny. He's the only, one of the only people who can actually do this. And uh, he sets out to, with a team of adventurers. They're a very um, Dungeons and dragons -y group. There's a bard, a rogue, a sorcerer, and there's even an alchemist, which is not a class in Dungeons and Dragons, but I believe is in Pathfinder. And they set out on this grand adventure to this place called the Barrel Lands, which is kind of this, this um, destroyed, desecrated land of this old ancient civilization that um, these adventurers often go to and delve into these dungeons to find treasure. Uh, 30 years ago, a team went and recovered this artifact, which it's now revealed is cursed and is causing all these problems. And it's up to our hero and his team to take the artifact back and put it back into the dungeon. One of my favorite things about the story is just the fully realized world. I've heard some reviewers call this a little bit slow paced, this book, and I can see where they're coming from, but I don't totally agree. I would say, I would call it more episodic than slow paced. Much like in a D&D adventure, there's a lot of adventures on the way to the main adventure. Uh, there's a lot of things that happen on the road and on the in their travels that don't some of them don't necessarily tie into the the larger story some do but kind of the episodic nature of the story i really like and a lot of the things that you don't expect to pay it to tie into the main story end up kind of actually tying into the main story either in a way that they reveal something important about one of the characters or there's a plot uh, a plot tie-in that maybe you're not expecting in the story i also really enjoyed the characters um, Arik, like I said, seeing him grow from, uh, from this retired, almost broken man into what he eventually becomes is really satisfying and thrilling. The cast, the cast they put around him is also great. And, uh, there's a character that comes in, um, uh, towards the end that I believe is going to feature more significantly in the sequels that I'm, I'm very excited about. The prose is actually, is really good in this story as well. Uh, 
it feels like you're in the hands of a storyteller who knows what they're doing, which to me is like the number one key thing. Like I'm not, I don't need the prose to be the most beautiful, but I do need to feel like I, I'm in good hands with the writer. And I definitely felt like that uh, with Mike Schell. He's a good writer. So if you're a fan of adventuring groups, traveling across the fantasy world and delving into dungeons and facing just terrible monsters that it seems like there'd be no way for them to overcome, I think you'd like this book. I think this book made a little bit of a splash in 2018 when it came out, but I haven't heard many people talking about it recently. I stumbled across a thread on Reddit, which is where I found out about it and what kind of convinced me to read it. Um, but I think this book is, is great and deserves a wider audience than it's gotten so far. I'm excited to go on to the sequels too. Book two is called Sin Eater, which I'm excited about because there's a very interesting and creepy character, the Sin Eater, in book one that uh, made only a kind of a brief appearance. And I'm excited to see them build on that in book two. This is a three book series and uh, I plan to continue on. And if the second book doesn't let me down, I'll read the whole thing. So have you read Aching God? What did you think of it? Let me know in the comments and thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time.